Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I am Varsha Williams and with me is Abhishek Mukhopadhyay with the Midday News. The headlines. Country achieves another milestone of administering 150 crore COVID-19 vaccine doses. Prime Minister Narendra Modi hails the achievement. Prime Minister inaugurates second campus of Chittaranjan National Cancer Institute in Kolkata virtually. Supreme Court directs the Registrar General of Punjab and Haryana High Court to secure and preserve the travel records of Prime Minister's recent visit to Punjab. Three member MHA committee visits Firozpur to take stock of the situation relating to recent security lapse during Prime Minister's visit. Supreme Court clears decks for postgraduate medical counseling and admissions including other backward classes and economically weaker sections reservations for the current academic year 2021-22. Center announces a third national water awards 2020 Uttar Pradesh awarded first prize Rajasthan second and Tamil Nadu third. 3,007 cases of Omicron reported so far. Over 1 lakh 17,000 new COVID cases reported in the country in the last 24 hours. And in cricket, South Africa beat India by seven wickets in second test to level three match series 1-1. As the number of COVID-19 cases are rising fast in several parts of the country. We appeal to our listeners to be vigilant and to get fully vaccinated and help others including children between 15 and 18 years get vaccinated as the new omicron variant of coronavirus is causing concern please continue to follow the three simple steps to stay safe wear a face mask maintain 2 gaz ki doori for social distancing focus on hand and face hygiene for any covid related information and guidance contact national helpline numbers 0112397 and 1075 and now the news in detail India's scripted history by crossing the landmark of 150 crore covid-19 vaccination doses today this remarkable feat was achieved in less than a year our correspondent reports that since the start of the national covid vaccination drive on the 16th of january last year the country has administered over 90% of first dose and 65% of second dose to its eligible citizens it may be recalled that under the world's largest vaccination drive 100 crore vaccination coverage was achieved in just 279 days on the 21st of october last year Prime Minister Narendra Modi today congratulated the country on achieving the milestone of administering 150 crore COVID-19 vaccine doses. He said, in the first week of the first month of the new year, India is achieving the historic landmark of administering 150 crore COVID-19 vaccine doses. This is the symbol of the new resolution of India, which denotes self-confidence and self-reliance, he said. 150 crore vaccine doses ka ye suraksha kavach हमारे लिए बहुत महत्वपूर्ण हो जाता है आज भारत की वयस्क जनसंख्या में से 90 प्रतिशत से ज्यादा लोगों को वैक्सीन की एक डोज लग चुकी है सिर्फ पांच दिन के भीतर ही डेढ़ करोड़ से ज्यादा बच्चों को भी वैक्सीन की डोज लगाई जा चुकी ये उपलब्धि पूरे देश की है हर सरकार की है मैं विशेष रूप से इस उपलब्धि के लिए देश के वैज्ञानिकों का वैक्सीन मैन्युफैक्चरर्स का हमारे हेल्थ सेक्टर से जुड़े साथियों का बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद करता हूं डी प्राइम मिनिस्टर थैंक द साइंटिस्ट्स वैक्सीन मैन्युफैक्चरर्स एंड हेल्थ वर्कर्स फॉर द फीट द प्राइम मिनिस्टर वाज स्पीकिंग आफ्टर इनॉग्युरेटिंग द सेकंड कैंपस ऑफ चितरंजन नेशनल कैंसर इंस्टीट्यूट सीएनसीआई इन कोलकाता दिस आफ्टरनून via video conferencing mr modi said the nation has advanced another step towards providing better healthcare facility to the people it will help the poor and common people who are suffering from cancer union health minister mansukh mandavia was present at the second campus in new town kolkata while chief minister mamata banerjee was attending the program virtually 
The second campus of CNCI has been built in line with the Prime Minister's vision to expand and upgrade the health facilities in all parts of the country. CNCI was facing a heavy load of cancer patients and a need for expansion was being felt for some time. This need will be fulfilled through the second campus. The campus has been built at a cost of over 530 crore rupees, out of which around 400 crore rupees have been provided by the Union Government and rest by the West Bengal Government in the ratio of 75 to 25. Union government has said that a total of 3,007 cases of Omicron variant of COVID-19 have been reported so far in the country. Out of these total cases, 1,199 patients have already recovered and migrated. Maximum number of 876 cases have been reported from Maharashtra, followed by Delhi, wherein 465 cases have been reported so far. Omicron cases have been reported in 27 states and union territories. 30,836 COVID patients have recovered in the last 24 hours and the national recovery rate stands at 97.57%. The country reported over 1,17,000 new COVID cases in the last 24 hours. Currently, India's active case load is over 3,71,000. The ministry said more than 68 crore 68 lakh COVID-19 tests have been conducted so far. Over 154 crore 32 lakh vaccine doses have been provided to states and union territories so far. The vaccines have been given through the central government free of cost channel and direct state procurement category. The health ministry said over 18 crore 14 lakh balance and unutilized COVID vaccine doses are still available with the states and UTs. Speaking to All India Radio about the country's achievement of crossing 150 crore vaccination, Dr. N. K. Arora, chairman of COVID Working Group, said, Today is a great day and another great milestone. We complete administration of 150 crore doses of COVID vaccine to Indians. All the vaccine doses are manufactured in India. This is a matter of great pride. Equally encouraging and heartening news is that during last four days, children between the age of 15 and 18 are coming with great enthusiasm and encouragement to get their vaccine and we hope that the first dose to all our adolescent children should be completed by the end of this month. I will appeal to all the adults who are still left out and have not received any dose of COVID vaccine and another about 20 crore adults who have received only single dose to come forward and quickly get their second dose as well. Union Home Secretary Ajay Kumar Bhalla has reiterated the need to have a unified strategy in the Delhi NCR region to tackle the COVID-19 pandemic. In view of the recent surge in the number of COVID-19 cases, especially of Omicron variant in Delhi NCR, Home Secretary yesterday chaired a meeting to review the COVID-19 situation and preparedness in Delhi NCR, which includes Delhi and nine bordering districts in the states of Uttar Pradesh and Haryana. During this meeting, he conveyed that the Omicron variant being highly transmissible, no stone is to be left unturned to deal with any surge in cases. Mr. Bhalla also stressed that the health infrastructure in all the districts of Delhi NCR should be immediately strengthened to deal with any enhanced requirement. He asked to ensure that oxygen supply equipment is fully functional and buffer stocks of essential drugs are maintained. The meeting was attended by Dr. V.K. Paul, Member Health, Niti Aayog, other senior officers of the central government and chief secretaries of Uttar Pradesh, Haryana and Delhi. Assam Chief Minister Himanta Bishwa Sharma met top officials of the state in Guwahati last night to discuss the rising cases of COVID-19. Assam has registered 844 new COVID-19 cases during the last 24 hours. The state's COVID-19 positivity rate stood at 2.37% yesterday. In Odisha, government offices have started functioning with 50% staff strength from today. Along with this night curfew from 9pm to 5am also commences from today in view of the rapid rise in COVID positive cases in the state. Odisha reported as many as 2,703 fresh cases on a single day yesterday. A report. There has been an exponential increase in the number of COVID-positive cases in the state that jumped from 428 on the 2nd of this month 
to a high of 2,703 yesterday. The number of active cases too have spiked from 5,739 day before yesterday to 8,237 as of now. Accordingly, the state government has imposed many restrictions on public gathering with effect from today to contain the virus. While the Bhuvaneshwar Municipal Corporation has declared quite a number of barriers in capital Bhuvaneshwar as containment zones, it has also decided to subject all passengers deboarding at Bhuvaneshwar Airport to mandatory RT-PCR test. Girish Chandra Das, AIR News, Bhuvaneshwar. The number of new COVID cases in West Bengal has crossed 15,000 in the past 24 hours with 19 fresh fatalities. Out of 62,413 samples tested yesterday, 15,421 were tested positive as the positivity rate climbed to 24.71%. 6,569 cases were reported in Kolkata alone, which is highest in the state. 48 micro-containment zones have already been set up in the Kolkata Municipal Corporation area. Meanwhile, BJP has demanded to postpone the municipal elections for at least one month in wake of the COVID situation. State BJP leader Shamik Bhattacharya today said, COVID situation in the state is alarming and the state government needs to take a decision regarding the polls. In Punjab, 2,427 new COVID positive cases were reported yesterday. A maximum 687 cases were reported from Patiala district, followed by 364 cases from SAS Nagar district. Vaccination drive has also been intensified in the state, and yesterday over 1,48,000 persons were inoculated. Due to exponential rise in COVID-19 cases, the Karnataka state government will impose weekend curfew across the state from today. Restrictions are introduced from 10 p.m. tonight to 5 a.m. on Monday. The weekend curfew will be in place for two weeks. There will be no restrictions on essential services and food deliveries. However, theatres, hotels, bars, restaurants, pubs and clubs, swimming pool and gym can operate by allowing only 50% of their capacity. In Bengaluru alone, the physical classes till 9th standard are closed. More from our Bengaluru correspondent. The Bengaluru Metropolitan Transport Corporation operating Bengaluru City Bus Services will extend only skeletal service during the weekend curfew. Only 10% of the total buses will operate from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. in the city. The Bengaluru Metro Rail Corporation operating Metro Train Services has said that the trains will run from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. with a frequency of 20 minutes. The passengers must carry an RT-PCR negative report and double-dose vaccination certificate to avail the services. Those arriving to the airport, railway station and bus stand have to produce tickets and COVID-related documents. Sudhindra, AIR News, Bengaluru. Government has said that it is misleading that some media reports have claimed the approval for co-vaccine vaccine for 15 to 18 years age group has been given despite WHO not having a coded emergency use listing. Union Health Ministry said such reports are highly ill-informed and far from the truth. It said the guidelines have been issued by the Ministry and these guidelines had no place mentioned about emergency use listing by the World Health Organization. In a bilingual live phone and program Corona Jagrukta series, Dr. Anup Kumar of Sabdarjang Hospital, New Delhi, will be with us tonight to answer the queries related to coronavirus. Listeners can ask questions to the expert from 9.30 p.m. on telephone number 011-2342-1230 and 011-2342-1764. You can also post your queries on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts by hashtag AskAIR. This live program can be heard on FM Gold Channel and additional frequencies from 9.30 p.m. onwards. This program will also be available on our website newsonair.gov.in and YouTube channel News on AIR Official. India today reiterated that it has a doctrine of maintaining a credible minimum deterrence based on a no-first-use posture and non-use of nuclear weapons against non-nuclear weapon states. India remains committed to the goal of universal, non-discriminatory and verifiable nuclear disarmament in response to a media query regarding the joint statement on preventing nuclear war and avoiding arms race. The External Affairs Ministry spokesperson Orindam Bakchi said India welcomes the joint statement this week, which reaffirms the importance of addressing nuclear threats and underscores the desire to work towards creating a security environment more conducive to progress on disarmament. You are listening to the Midday News on All India Radio, a reminder of the headlines before we move on. 
country achieves another milestone of administering 150 crore COVID-19 vaccine doses. Prime Minister Narendra Modi hails the achievement. Prime Minister inaugurates second campus of Chittaranjan National Cancer Institute in Kolkata virtually. Supreme Court directs the Registrar General of Punjab and Haryana High Court to secure and preserve the travel records of Prime Minister's recent visit to Punjab. Three-member MHA committee visits Firozpur to take stock of the situation relating to recent security lapse during Prime Minister's visit. Supreme Court clears decks for postgraduate medical counselling and admissions including other backward classes and economically weaker sections, reservations for the current academic year 2021-22. Sent announces third National Water Awards 2020, Uttar Pradesh awarded first prize, Rajasthan second and Tamil Nadu third. 3,007 cases of Omicron reported so far, over 1,17,000 new COVID cases reported in the country in the last 24 hours. And in cricket, South Africa beat India by seven wickets in the second test to level the three-match series 1-1. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at EIR News Alerts. <laughs> Welcome back to the Midday News. The committee constituted by Ministry of Home Affairs to probe the lapses during the visit of Prime Minister Narendra Modi has summoned Punjab DGP Siddharth Chattopadhyay and 13 officers for questioning. Earlier the team reached Firozpur today and visited the flyover where the PM was stopped and took stock of the situation. The Supreme Court has directed the Registrar General of Punjab and Haryana High Court to secure and preserve the travel records of Prime Minister Narendra Modi during his visit to Punjab forthwith. The court has also directed Punjab Police Authorities, SPG and other central and state agencies to cooperate and provide necessary assistance to seal the entire record. The Supreme Court was hearing today a petition seeking a thorough probe into the security lapse during Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to Punjab on Wednesday. Union Education Minister Dharmendra Pradhan has appreciated Odisha Chief Minister Naveen Patnaik for his concern about the security of the Prime Minister. The Minister said, political parties in power can have differing ideologies, beliefs and opinions, but that can be no ground to legitimize any breach in security for the Prime Minister. Earlier in a tweet yesterday, Odisha Chief Minister Mr. Patnaik, describing the Prime Minister of India as an institution, said, It is the duty of every government to provide foolproof security and safeguard the dignity of this institution. Anything contrary should be unacceptable in our democracy, he added. Uttar Pradesh has been awarded the first prize in the state category of Third National Water Awards 2020. This follows Rajasthan occupying the second place, while Tamil Nadu secured third place. Jal Shakti Minister Gajendra Singh Shekhawat to declare, declared the winners of the National Water Awards. The 57 awards were announced in 11 categories, including Best States, District, Panchayat and Best Industries. National Water Awards were instituted to recognize and encourage exemplary work and efforts made by states, districts, individuals and organizations across the country in attaining the government's vision of a Jal Samrit Bharat. The Supreme Court today cleared the decks for postgraduate medical counseling and admissions, including the other backward classes and economically weaker sections, reservations for the current academic year 2021-22. A bench headed by Justice D.Y. Chandrachur and A.S. Bopanna upheld the constitutional validity of 27% reservation for OBC and 10% EWS for the NEET UG and NEET PG. However, the top court added that it would decide on the rationale of criteria of Rs. 8 lakh income for EWS category in March this year. Addressing the 75th Establishment Day of Bureau of Indian Standards, BIS, yesterday, Minister of Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution, Piyush Goyal, said that quality is not expensive, it is cost-effective. He highlighted that for BIS to grow, it should work as a facilitator, not an obstructor. 
He said that BIS should develop as a global organization, learn from global experiences and integrate global standards. Mr. Goyal said that nothing short of a quality or standard revolution is required. He said one nation, one standard will become a game changer in this regard. Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade, Ministry of Commerce and Industry is organizing Startup India Innovation Week from the 10th to the 16th of this month. In the context of Azadi Kamrit Mahotsav, this virtual innovation celebration is designed to showcase the spread and depth of entrepreneurship across India. And now let's listen to a special program, Azadi Ka Safar, highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News, Birth of a Nation. India's glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed. AIR News brings you a glimpse of the struggle every day. Hindiyon mein bu rahegi jab talak iman ki, takht London par chalegi teg Hindustan ki. This immortal verse of the last Mughal emperor, Bahadur Shah Zafar, was the opening of the programs of Azad Hind Radio. After setting up a free India center in Berlin, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose started Azad Hind Radio as part of Germany's radio service, which first aired on the 7th of January 1942. The programs were meant to show solidarity with Indians living abroad, as well as those living in the subcontinent. They included news bulletins transmitted in English, Gujarati, Marathi, Bengali, Pashto, Tamil, Persian and Telugu. हमने जो आजादी की लड़ाई छेड़ रखी है उसे तब तक जारी रखना होगा जब तक हमें मुकम्मल आजादी हासिल न हो आप संगठित शक्ति से शांति और अहिंसा पूर्वक आत्म बलिदान करने के लिए जल्द से जल्द तैयार हो जाइए न मालूम कब बिगुल बज उठे असंगठित और कमजोर रहना पाप है गुलामी सब कष्टों और पापों की जड़ है अब गुलामी की जंजीरों को तोड़ने के लिए एक दिल एक प्राण होकर कटिबद्ध हो जाइए हिंदुस्तान अब गुलाम नहीं रह सकता और न कोई ताकत इसे गुलाम रखी सकती है हाँ हमें स्वतंत्रता का मूल्य चुकाना होगा आप इसके लिए तैयार हो जाइए जिससे यदि हम गुलाम हिंदुस्तान में पैदा हुए हैं तो स्वतंत्र हिंदुस्तान में जीवे और मरे सभी आजाद हिंदुस्तान दुनिया को नए नए संदेश दे सकेगा इनिशियली बेस्ड इन जर्मनी इट्स हेडक्वार्टर्स व शिफ्टेड टू सिंगापुर ब्रॉडकास्टिंग फ्रॉम बर्लिन बोस सेलिब्रेटेड द वेव ऑफ जैपनीज विक्ट्रीज ओवर ब्रिटिश टेरिटरीज and passionately spoke about India's Quit India movement. Azad Hind Radio aims to counter the broadcasts of radio from allied nations during World War II. The 7th of January is also the birth anniversary of freedom fighter and social reformer Gyananjan Niyogi. Born in 1891, Gyananjan was strongly influenced by Brahmo ideals and he tried to implement them in life. He was attracted towards the freedom movement when Bengal was partitioned in 1905. In 1909, Gyananjan Niyogi formed the Calcutta Working Men's Institution. Apart from its educational and training activities, it organized medical assistance and carried out development work for the benefit of the poor residents living in slums. He extensively toured the rural areas of Bengal and started using the magic lantern for spreading consciousness amongst the poor and the uneducated sections of society. In order to promote the use of indigenous materials, he used to organize the Swadeshi Mela. When Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose was the mayor of Calcutta 
from 1930 to 31 he requested niyogi to organize a swadeshi campaign after independence when refugees came from east pakistan yananjan niyogi put his heart and soul into rehabilitation work the noble soul breathed his last on the 13th of february 1956 That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi ka Safar with AIR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. Swadhinta aandolan ke dauran Bharatiya janamanas ko utvedit kar swatantrata ka alag jagane aur matrabhumi ke prati seva, samarpan aur pyar ki jwala prachalit kar dene wale Amar geeton par aadharit vishesh karyakram आजादी के तराने सुनना न भूले एफ एम गोल्ड सौ दशमलव एक मेगाहर्ट्स पर प्रत्येक शुक्रवार शाम चार बजकर पैतालीस मिनट पर परिक्रमा कार्यक्रम के अंतर्गत आजादी के तराने सिर्फ आकाशवाणी पर बेस्ट विशेष टू ऑल कंज्यूमर्स फॉर आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव हॉलमार्क इन शो स्पिरिटी ऑफ गोल्ड ऑलवेज परचेज हॉलमार्क गोल्ड ज्वेलरी For any consumer-related complaints, please contact National Consumer Helpline's toll-free number one double four zero four. Issued in public interest by Department of Consumer Affairs, Government of India. Jago Grahak Jago. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has appreciated K. C. Ganapati and Varun Thakkar for inspiring youngsters of Tamil Nadu regarding sports and fitness under the Meet the Champions program. In a reply to your tweet by PIB Tamil Nadu the prime minister said remarkable gesture by KC Ganpati and Varun Thakkar to inspire the talented youngsters of Tamil Nadu Union Information and Broadcasting Minister Anurag Singh Thakur today said the BJP government has made Uttar Pradesh free of gunda raj and law and order has improved a lot He added that this is why Investment is coming to the state and that is why Uttar Pradesh again wants the UK government speaking at the inaugural session of DD Conclave in Lucknow the senior BJP leader and co in charge of the party for the elections and Raj Singh Thakur claimed that BJP will win more seats than last time in the upcoming elections in Uttar Pradesh because in the last 5 years the UK government has done splendid work In Jammu and Kashmir three terrorists were killed in an encounter with security forces in Solwa Kralpura area of Badgam district this morning Inspector General of Police Kashmir Zone Vijay Kumar said the slain terrorists belonged to Jaish Mohammed outfit and were wanted in several terror related crimes he said three AK56 rifles were recovered from the encounter site In cricket South Africa beat India by 7 wickets in the second test at the Wanderers in Johannesburg last night to level the three match series 1-1 Chasing the victory target of 240 runs set by India, South Africa achieved the target in 67.4 overs. They made 243 for the loss of three wickets. South Africa's skipper Dean Alger was the hero for the home team for his unbeaten 96 run knock. He was declared player of the match. For India, Mohammad Shami, Shardul Thakur and Ravi Chandran Ashwin picked one wicket each. The third and final test begins in Cape Town from January 11th. Now let us take a look at the weather update for the day. National capital Delhi is likely to have generally cloudy sky with light rain or drizzle. It recorded minimum temperature of 14 degrees Celsius while maximum will be around 19 degrees. Mumbai is likely to have a partly cloudy sky. It noted a minimum temperature of 21 degrees maximum expected to be around 29. Chennai is likely to have partly cloudy sky. Temperature will vary between 22 and 23 degrees Celsius. Kolkata will have fog in the morning and mainly clear sky later the city noted a minimum temperature of 14 degrees while maximum is expected to be around 26 degrees and now before we end the bulletin the headlines once again country achieves another milestone of administering 150 crore covid-19 vaccine doses prime minister narendra modi hails the achievement Prime Minister inaugurates second campus of Chittaranjan National Cancer Institute in Kolkata virtually. 
Supreme Court directs Registrar General of Punjab and Haryana High Court to secure and preserve the travel records of Prime Minister's recent visit to Punjab. Three member MHA committee visits Firozpur to take stock of the situation relating to recent security lapse during Prime Minister's visit. Supreme Court clears decks for postgraduate medical counseling and admissions including other backward classes and economically weaker sections reservations for the current academic year 2021-22. Centre announces third National Water Awards 2020, Uttar Pradesh awarded first prize, Rajasthan second, Tamil Nadu third. 3,007 cases of Omicron reported so far and in cricket, South Africa beat India by seven wickets in second test to level three match series 1-1. And with that, we end the midday news.